So now that we've talked a little bit about breathing and projection, I want to look at some other oral aspects of delivery. Now, we're going to uh, move through this uh, lecture on uh, pacing and pausing, and then the next lecture we're going to have on movement and gesture. And at the end of the next lecture, uh, you're going to be linked to a YouTube playlist. And I've got a, a number of sample clips that I don't own, that's why I'm linking to them. But I've got a number of sample clips there uh, that illustrate uh, the concepts discussed in this lecture and in the next lecture. And I just kind of wanted to let you know that's coming. So I do want to talk about pacing and pausing. And when I talk about pacing, what I mean here is speech rate. So certainly, um, people are often concerned that when they're delivering their speech, they're speaking too quickly. They're speaking too fast. And that's probably a reasonable concern. People usually aren't worried about speaking too slow. And so the question I'm often asked is, how fast should I be speaking? Well, I can tell you that the uh, average speech rate is 125 to 175 words per, per minute in spoken conversational American English. Okay, that's fine, that's an interesting factoid. Uh, that doesn't necessarily help us out too much with our impromptu speeches are in general, because when we're delivering a speech, it's not so much a question of raw rate as it is variable rate. Okay? It's not so much a question of how fast or slow you're going overall, but are you going slow for the lines, for the sentences, for the phrases that need more time? And I don't mean simply more time for you to get out. I mean more time for your audience to process. S rate, pacing and pausing can help um, for your audience distinguish between high importance and low importance ideas. Okay? Now, once again, we've talked about flowing. Flowing is a very useful concept, not only in terms of taking notes in a presentation, but as a guide for your performance. So while you're doing your impromptu, uh, either for this class or while you're doing a presentation at work or whatever you're doing outside this class, imagine that your audience is trying to take notes on what you're saying. Okay? Are you making it easy for them to take those notes? Are you making it easy for them to flow? Can they distinguish based on your talk, based on your pacing and, and your pitch, what is a key idea and what's a supporting idea? Okay? So pacing really helps us in this regard. You are signaling to your audience what to write, and by slowing down through those key phrases, you're giving them the time to write it down. Okay? So I don't know overall how fast or slow you're going to be going. I don't know how fast or slow you're going to be going at any one particular part of your speech. But I can tell you, you should probably be slowing down for those major points in your speech. The thesis. That's your important line, right? You're going to want to move through that more slowly. Preview of your main points. That's something you would want your audience to write down. So signal to them that you want them to do it and give them the time to do it. Uh, when you hit each main claim, you're probably going slower. And certainly that last line, you're moving through more slowly. Now, if you're worried about going too fast, in addition to knowing where you need to go slow, if you're still worried about going too fast, um, you know, one thing you can be doing is working with audiences. I certainly know that audiences help me slow down. So when I first started recording these lectures, I don't really have an active audience here, uh, I was racing. Okay, and I watched it and I felt it. And so I immediately had to make changes. That audience, when I've got it there, I can slow down. That really underscores that communication orientation we've talked about. Right? If the goal is to converse with that audience, okay, actually sitting there and talking the, to them is going to slow you down, as is the breathing and projection stuff that we just talked about. If you are you know, really taking in those deep breaths and pushing that air out forcefully, and you're projecting to be heard well past the back of the room, you are going to speak more slowly. Okay? You, you, you just are. Now, in future speeches, we'll talk about you know, the pharyngeal space in the throat and opening the mouth wider, which are other aspects that are going to help you slow down a little bit. Okay? But so speech rate is variable based on what you want the audience to follow along with. Pausing. Again, pausing is uh, based on how we're going to be processing that information. So once again, it's not a question of how often you pause or how infrequently you pause, but where those pauses are and what those pauses are doing to help us uh, process the verbal information coming at us. Okay? So imagine, if you will, a phrase as an arc. Right? So I start a sentence, it's got its middle, and it clearly has its end. You can hear the pause is coming between these arcs. Okay? And so that's where you want your pauses to occur. The problem emerges if I start a phrase and then I 
Oh, and then I remember where I wanted to go, and then I raced past where the pause was. There was a period there you didn't hear it. I flew past it. Now I stop in the middle when I kind of run out of what I'm going to say. Then I figure out what I'm going to say, and I move on to the next. And after I do this for a while, you won't be able to listen to it. And in truth, what really what's going to happen is you're going to want to go through your screen and punch me. And I hate it too, okay? It is horrible to listen to, and it's awful to do. So you want to be thinking about, how can I give shape to this? I want to make sure that the pause is coming at the end of the phrase. From the stance of a listener and a speaker, I'm delivering to you a phrase in its package. I'm handing you this idea. You can take it and process it. If I put the pause in the middle, I'm breaking that concept, that phrase, that utterance in half. And I'm ripping it in half, and I'm putting, giving you both halves. You have to stitch it together in order to process it. Okay. So make life easier for your audience. Put those pauses at the ends of phrases. Now, that's easier said than done. How does this map onto actual performance? Well, despite what I just said about not worrying too much about going fast or slow, you know, if you slow down, you're giving yourself a little bit more time to figure out and feel the end of that phrase. By the same token, sit longer in those pauses. Give yourself a little bit more time to sense what the shape of that pause is. Okay? So pacing and pausing are not simply a question of presence and absence. Pacing and pausing are matters of how they're working in tandem to clarify what you're saying for your audience and how they're working in tandem with how your audience is going to experience your talk as a group of listeners trying to process these discrete phrases. Now in the lex next lecture, we're going to start talking about gestures and movement, so other physical things that you can be doing to help clarity. And then at the end of that lecture, we're going to start analyzing some of these sample YouTube clips.